Hello everyone, this is the fifth and final session of the Leaving Bulimia Behind series and today I'm going to look at um, places you can get help um, and also how to carry on with leaving bulimia behind after you've made your deal with yourself that you're not going to uh, binge eat and, and uh, vomit or purge yourself uh, and you're going to to leave the bulimia behind. First of all, I would say that these talks are a personal perspective and they're just intended to help. Uh, if you need help, you really, your first port of call should be your GP or your doctor and uh, you should tell them about your symptoms and talk to them about the possibility of being referred on for further help. Now, I'm aware that there are long, long waiting lists for this. And this is why uh, I thought I'd do the series, because it, it gives people something to hold on to while they're waiting for professional help. So, but, but the professional help, you know, always go for that. Don't, don't neglect to do that. The other thing is that there are some books and uh, a charity that can help. Uh, I will put the details on the comments section of this particular uh, video. Uh, the charity is um, Beat Eating Disorders, and it's called Beat for short. And it's it's online at beateatingdisorders.org.uk. And it has a helpline that runs from nine till eight during the week, and then from four till eight at weekends and bank holidays. And the helpline is 080-8801-0677. Okay, that's 080-8801-0677. Now, there are several different helplines, but uh, I think that's, that's the general one. So I would try that first of all. But uh, there's also a youth helpline and a student helpline. And if you go online, you can see them and they will. Somebody will talk to you if you ring the helpline and will make suggestions as to how you might start to move away from bulimia or from what other any, any other eating disorder that you might have. Now, um, a, a lot of people um, use CBT to treat eating disorders. And I've come across a couple of books where they take you through some CBT exercises, which you can do on your own, if you wish. And um, one of them is this one, which I got from Amazon. Um, it's the Overcoming Bulimia Workbook. Now, it's, it's American and... Um, there's not that many uh, issue, editions of it on um, Amazon. There are some left though at the moment. And I, look, I looked at it, I've read, read it, and I think it's quite useful. I mean, bear in mind it is CBT. So it's the kind of thing about week by week, having a record of your eating and, and um, working towards moving away from bulimia in quite a kind of structured way. Now it's um, on Amazon, it's £22.95 or on the Kindle edition, it's £15.19. Um, if anybody wants to know any more about it, you can private message me and I can, I can tell you what I know. Um, the, another one I found on, on Amazon and these were the ones that had uh, the most stars. So uh, I'm just going for the, because there's quite a few. This other one is called Overcoming Bulimia Nervosa and Binge Eating, a self-help guide using cognitive behavioural techniques. And that is um, on Amazon again. And its um, paperback is $7.99 and on Kindle it's $3.99. So these two books, I think, are helpful for somebody who's um, waiting for treatment and maybe wants to start to do a bit for themselves. And they are designed for people to work through on their own. And um, it can be helpful to, to have a friend or a counsellor or whatever that you can work through this with if you wish. Uh, but, but the resources are there 
And I think given that the face-to-face -face resources are so limited at the moment, I think it was worthwhile to recommend them. Right, now then, so you've made your decision and it's up to you how you put it into place. People will do it in different ways. Um, but what about the future? You've got the rest of your life ahead of you. Um, there will be wobbles. There will be times when you might resume the behaviour. You might, you might have a really great night out, have a really good meal, drink a bit too much, and then come back and feel a flood of guilt. The thing to remember is that there's always wobbles and uh, the important thing is not the wobble, but the wobble not leading to anything more. Um, so because, because it, it's just like on a smaller level, you know, having the one chocolate biscuit, then two, then three, then the whole packet, and then you think, oh, it's all gone, I've lost it, and then you make yourself vomit. You will have wobbles. The important thing is thinking, saying to yourself, I've had a wobble and uh, I'm not, I'm just going to kind of live with it and uh, get through it. Keep on, keep on. Not to, not to think, oh, that's it, I've lost it completely. It's gone. I can't do this. Don't punish yourself. I mean, you've got to think you're doing really, really well. I mean, it's a difficult thing to have. It's a difficult thing to, to, to work through. And you should be respected for, for doing that. You should respect yourself and be kind to yourself. So my tip about wobbles is just that. It's, they're wobbles. If you see them as a wobble, you'll be okay. If you see them as a descent into catastrophe, then you won't. Try not try just to think wobble, wobble, and then it'll be smooth tomorrow, next week. Um, I had an uncle, and, and I mean, you know, this is really nothing to do with eating disorders. He was um, quite a, a devoted, devout Christian. And he had a saying, which I think is quite good for anybody, really. His saying was, take up your cross and relax. And basically it means do what you have to do. So, you know, there are all bits of our lives that we have to do. Like, you know, you, you might be working, you might be studying, um, you might be a parent or you might be a child of a parent. Uh, there, are, there are parts of our lives that are central to our lives and that we have to do. But, but there's so much of our lives that we don't have to do what we don't want to do. And the whole point about this saying is do what you must do, do what you need to do, and then do what you like. So uh, it doesn't matter what you like, you can like whatever you want. Um, I, You know, it's not really very cool to be keen on animals, you know, I mean, like, you don't, you don't see, I mean, when I was in the 70s, six, late 60s and 70s, you didn't see many kind of cool people kind of patting a, a chihuahua or um, kind of cuddling a kitten. Um, and it was only a few years ago that I realised how much I loved animals. And um, it's, it's kind of, I don't really care whether it's cool or not. Um, I just, I've, I've got quite a few animals now and I love it. And there are all sorts of things which, you can do with your life, which, you know, it doesn't matter whether anyone else thinks it's a good idea. I mean, you know, dye your hair purple. That's great. Um, just do what you want to do in the majority of your life when you've got rid of everything you need to do. Okay. Next point, um, try and spend some time with nature. Um, I, uh, just been talking about cats and I think that um, pets are a wonderful way of keeping you grounded and uh, just just they live a life that is so intimately connected with us but so different from ours they don't have our anxieties um, also you, you I mean you could do things like bird watching 
or, or watching the um, watching nature programs, cat videos. I mean, cat videos, you know, I think cat videos have done more from, for the nation's health this last year than probably Prozac has. I, I mean, you see a video of a cat licking a kitten and something inside you turns to kind of chocolate fondant. And that's just what you want because you've got that sweetness inside you. So um, animals, uh, whether uh, whether you're lucky enough to have a pet or whether or not it's you're watching videos about animals or watching animals in the wild, all of that is just really, really good for your mental health. And if you can hear a crunch, um, one of my cats is just having some late lunch. Right. Um, Next point, try and do a little bit of good. Um, I mean, you know, this, this has kept me going for many years and it doesn't have to be anything very, very much. But, um, you know, when you're really, really low, if you can do something for someone else, even if it's like posting a nice, nice kind of comment on their Facebook page or giving somebody a quick ring, it the comeback from it makes you feel better and you your self-esteem goes up because you feel well I'm really not I'm really a quite a nice person and you also get this delighted response from whoever you've done this for um and again you know if you want to do more you can you can volunteer um you can you can work with all sorts of different charities and believe me if you can do it, and I realise that some people just don't have the time, but if you can do it, it is one of the best remedies for depression and distress you can find. Because you feel like, well, I might be bloody miserable, but I'm doing some good. And gradually that can kind of turn you around into feeling, yeah, I'm doing some good for me as well. Um. Finally, finally, and this is the last point in my recording. Remember that you won't live forever. Um, sounds a bit grim, doesn't it? You know, kind of, uh, you're not going to live forever, so you might as well um, snap out of it. That's not what I mean at all. If you walk through a graveyard and you look at the inscriptions on the graves, things like a devoted husband and father, a respected member of the community, a much loved grandmother, a poet. What will people say about you? Think about the people that love you, the people that you love. Uh, and if you haven't got any people living that you can think about that, think about your parents or, or childhood friends. Think about people that knew you, what they would say about you. And one of the things that I'm 100% certain of is they wouldn't say you were someone with an eating disorder. They wouldn't say that uh, you'd, you'd binged, eaten and vomited or purged yourself. They wouldn't say that. They'll remember how you loved them, how you helped people, how you were a hard worker. Or how you were untidy and drove them crazy with their, your untidiness. Or how you were a great swimmer. How you made them laugh. How you were a great lover, a great mother. It's those qualities that make you what you are, not your bulimia. And it's those qualities that will carry you through walking away from bulimia. Have faith in yourself and be forgiving towards yourself and start that walk away from bulimia. And thanks everybody who's watched these and uh, if you want to ask any questions or to speak to me about this just private message me and I'll get back to you. Uh, bye bye everybody, uh, thank you very much, bye bye for now.